On weekend mornings, Ghazi Al Harbi likes to give his daughter driving lessons. She's only nine, and women aren't allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia anyway. But that's beside the point. This father and daughter are making up for seven years of lost time. I see my daughter, and I don't feel like she's my daughter. I'm trying to bond with her, but I still feel she's not the daughter that I knew. In April of 2005, Al Harbi was detained on the King Faisal Air Base in the town of Tabuk. That's where he served as an officer in the Saudi Ministry of Defense. He was accused of conspiring to commit treason and planning demonstrations against the state. He denies both crimes. I've never been out in a demonstration. I've never called for a demonstration. I was simply going from my work to my home. I was living my life for my family. Ghazi would spend the next seven years locked up as a political detainee. He says it took four years before his first hearing. In the presence of the judge, I was taken, with my eyes blindfolded and my feet tied. I said their accusations were not true, and I requested to see proof. But Al Harbi had entered the domain of the Ministry of Interior, Saudi Arabia's powerful national security agency. They said I was a unique prisoner, and they do not have laws to treat me with, just directives from the Ministry of Interior. Following the September 11th attacks in the U.S., Saudi Arabia endured its own set of al-Qaeda attacks against civilian and government targets. The kingdom responded by giving the Interior Ministry unprecedented authority to go after terrorists. Many human rights groups say this authority is being abused. It gave the Ministry of Interior an open hand to detain anyone, anytime and throw him in prison without any legal due process. What happened to Ghazi is a clear case of that open hand. Mohammed al Qatani is a human rights activist specializing in arbitrary detention. His organization meets Monday nights with former detainees like Ghazi and fellow activists. For the last three years, they've been helping political prisoners file reports with international human rights organizations and the United Nations. We are making it clear that we are not quiet uh, and we are not secret about it. We are going public. al Qatani says he files eight to ten reports a week, but very few actually lead to prisoner releases. He says this is due to international support for the ministry's counterterrorism efforts, which have considerably reduced al-Qaeda's presence in the kingdom. The praises that they're getting is really giving them the, the ammunition, if you will, to keep on and on and on. Uh, but unfortunately, our people are paying a hefty price. Time contacted the Ministry of Interior to comment on Al Harbi's case, but received no reply. In a meeting with a group of American journalists last spring in Riyadh, a ministry spokesperson admitted the agency has made wrongful arrests. Uh, we make mistakes. Well, um, uh, nothing wrong actually, because from the interrogation, we will be able to tell uh, that this people or this person is, is, is clear and he will be released. He says the ministry doesn't imprison anyone without conclusive evidence of their involvement in terrorism. Uh, officially, we announced that we arrested more than 11,000 people, but uh, uh, how many? Uh, are going to court, how many are still in prison, uh, less than uh, 50% of that number. A Human Rights Watch report from 2009 paints a different picture. According to interviews with families of political prisoners, many detainees are held for years without trial or access to a lawyer. The report also describes prisoner beatings, sleep deprivation, and threats to family members. <laughs> They used to hang me from a door with cuffs, and then they would pull me up until my feet were off the ground. And then they would hit me with their headbands. I was here two years. Al Harbi spent the first two years of his sentence inside this prison in Tabuk. He was released from prison in February. He says the conditions of his release were as puzzling as his imprisonment. 
For that reason, he says, he fears he could end up back there at any time. I'm living in fear. I feel like I have no rights. I'm living in every meaning of the word, a nightmare. Al Harbi has returned to his old post in the military, but says it's difficult seeing his former colleagues promoted to higher positions. He says his job has lost its meaning. I used to wear my uniform with pride, with dedication, and I used to go to the field and sit with other soldiers, and I was very proud. I'm a different person than I was seven years ago. For time, this is Jacob Templin in Tabuk, Saudi Arabia.